In this video, I'll be taking you through all the naming rules in X-Rev Transmit. Naming rules can also define output locations. Basically, the tokens and text after the last backslash will define the file name. Please refer to the output locations video for further information on controlling output locations. We'll begin by going into settings and looking at the naming rules for a particular format. The same rules apply to naming rules for transmittals and output locations. Let's look at our PDF naming rule as an example. In here you can see it's currently set up to be project number dash sheet number and then our revision in brackets. We can place these tokens are placeholders that enable us to use Revit parameters, Windows parameters, XREV parameters and system variables. To place these tokens we can type them in directly using the triangle bracket to indicate the particular parameter that we'd like to use. We can use abbreviation as well or we can use the drop down. So here you can see our sheet parameters we do support the use of custom shared parameters, so project parameters and shared parameters. Project parameters or project information parameters from Revit, name, number, etc. as well as custom parameters, so shared parameters. Extra particular parameters, so issue name and issue reason. And Windows parameters for things like the date or system parameters for computer name, user, na user name and user domain. We can also use system variables for things like oops, user profile. The placeholders themselves have advanced functionality such as alignment of values, formatting of values, prefix suffix to values, nominating a value as optional and specifying a default value. The full syntax is as follows. Prefix namespace dot parameter name comma alignment colon format in square brackets suffix question mark for the optional value and then what we'd want to be the default value with an equal sign all within those triangle brackets so if you were to include everything it could get quite complicated I'll take you through each one of those different sections individually to show you what their capabilities are and how you might use them in your projects. A prefix or suffix value is not inserted if the parameter is blank and not used if a default value is specified. Simply surround each prefix or suffix with square brackets. For example, looking at my revision at the moment the brackets around my revision will go in regardless of whether the revision is blank. If I didn't want those brackets to go in if the revision was blank, I should put those in as prefix and suffix. So by using open square bracket, then the, the character I want to display and then close square bracket, I've now indicated a prefix for my revision and to put in the suffix I do exactly the same thing open square bracket the character I want to show and then close square bracket 
So the preview that we see down here is exactly the same. I might also note this preview here is based on information from the, sh of, from the project that you currently have open. Revit gives us a list of sheets. We use the first sheet that Revit gives us uh, as our sample value. So if you have a couple of sheets in your project that you don't actually use, then those values might not be appropriate. Uh, so you may wish to delete those sheets if you're not using them. In which case your thumbnails or your, your previews will be more appropriate. The next functionality we have is formatting. Numeric and date parameters can be formatted in the placeholder using a colon. For example, with our date, by default it's using the global setting for dates from XREV Transmit. But let's say I still want to use that global default everywhere, so I don't want to change it. But for this one, I wanted to do something different. So to do that, I simply put in colon to indicate that I'm controlling the formatting. Then I put in the syntax for the date format that I'd like, in which case I want year, year, dot, month, month, dot, day, day. And down here you can see the preview of that date. The characters for the date format is lowercase y for year, uppercase m for month, lowercase d for day, lowercase m for minute, and lowercase s for second. Just remember for things like forward slash and backslash, don't use those in date formats uh, because in Windows filing systems they have other meaning in terms of folders and things like that. Um, so if you try and use those sorts of things in there you'll notice XREV Transmit considers that an error. The other formatting we control is numeric values. So uh, here you can see my project number is all numbers. If I wanted to pad it out to, say, eight digits, I can put in my colon and then eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see here, it's now padded out this numeric value to eight digits. This will work on text values that are all numbers or numeric and integer parameters. The other functionality we have is alignment. So if I just put in our revision parameter again, and I will put these back in as a prefix and a suffix, Let's say I wanted to pad out my revision so it was spaced from the rest of the parameters. Um, so I could put in a comma to indicate that I'm controlling the alignment and then the number of characters I want to pad it out to. So let's say we're going to pad it out to five characters. So you can see now there is three extra spaces that it's put in before our revision parameter to make it out those five characters. Similarly, if I go to minus five, then instead of being right aligned, it's now left aligned. We also have the ability to specify optional variables. 
If you want to use a parameter in a naming rule, but don't care if it doesn't exist or, or is blank, then you can simply add a question mark. This is very useful when using custom shared parameters or when some values are going to be blank. For example, let's say I wanted all this to go into a discipline subfolder. In my project, I have a shared parameter set up for discipline. However, there's a chance that someone may not fill out that discipline folder, in which case oh, that additional discipline parameter value, in which case XREB transmit would consider that an error and it would give you a warning and it would uh, cease to issue the drawings or generate the files. If we don't want that to be an error and we're okay with there not being a, f a particular value in that like circumstance, if, if, if blank is okay, then we simply put a question mark. So in that case, if this was blank, then this would all go into a folder. Uh, it wouldn't go into the subfolder of architectural. It would just go into a, the root directory of the output location. We also have the ability to specify default values. Default values are very useful to apply a value to input when the parameter value is blank. Default values ignore prefix, suffix and format. For example, looking at our revision, we may wish to specify a default value for when our revision is blank. At the moment, it would just put in a dash. But let's say instead we wanted to put something else in. To indicate a default value, we simply put in the equals sign. And then the text of what we actually want to display. So in which case, I'm going to put in dash not for issue. And again, just make sure you do things in the correct order. That needs to go after the suffix. So in this case, if I have a revision, it will display similar to what we see down here. But if the revision was blank, instead, it wouldn't put any brackets in or the revision. Instead, it would put in th this text here. So it would be dash, not for issue. Other functionality we have is for things, uh, is namespace. If you have two parameters with the same name in Revit, then you, you can use the namespace to differentiate between them. For example, the parameter of the project name is is called name, as is the parameter for the sheet's name. You can use the namespace to pick between them. So, for example, let's put them both in this project, in this naming rule. So we could put in project dot name. So the namespace is project. And then sheet dot name. So with our namespaces, valid namespaces are sheet, project, issue, and system. If I don't have this namespace in here, it still validates, but you can see it's just using the first parameter um, called name that Revit gives us. So if you want to be more specific, then you need to use the namespace to break it down. Say, so, well, actually, this is the name from the project.
And that concludes all the functionality of the naming rules.